Uh, but, Bill, uh, you were just saying this is Father's Day. Oh, yes, I know. Everybody will be talking about Father today. The air will be just glutted up with eulogies of Peter. There were many beautiful and touching tributes dedicated to Father by the poets and the tie manufacturers of this great and grand and glorious United States of ours. All right, Bill, all right, Bill. These great United States, yes. including the Samoan Islands, the Hawaiian Islands, the Philippine Islands, yes, Bill, and all the only great I... sea which purchased now known as Alaska. All right, all right, Bill, all right. Okay. And the Eskimos. We mustn't leave out the Eskimos, Don. No. You know, Don, there isn't one shower bath in a million Eskimos igloos. Well, what's that got to do with Father? I don't know. It somehow reminds me of my father. <laughs> Don, you remember this poem? Father, dear father, come home with me now. The clock in the steeple clangs one. At that time in the morning, father couldn't even get out of his chair, let alone go home. Uh, oh, Bill, uh, Charlie has a poem about his father, too. Yes, I know it. Little by little, the acorn grew. Would have been much better if the squirrel had eaten the acorn <laughs> instead of burying it. Uh, too steady. Oh, my. Yeah, once in a forest primeval, uh -huh. the murmuring pines and hemlock. Ah, uh, the wood alcohol has gone to that kid's head. <laughs> too far today. Ah, restrain him. Restrain yourself, my diminutive little chum. <laughs> this is Father's Day, and love permeates my bosom. Charles, my father, wrote a poem about your father. Woodman, woodman, spare that tree. <laughs> Touch not a single bough. In early youth it sheltered me. And now it holds me up. Oh, that's Very beautiful, Bill. Yes, was, Don. Yes. But despite all of my father's remonstrations and pleadings, that was the day they cut down Charlie's father. Yes, they clipped him and they mowed him down. <laughs> I have never seen my father, Mr. Fields. Oh, that's terrible. Go out and look in my woodshed. <laughs> Maybe there. Mr. Fields, could I call you Dad? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Fields, huh? Uh, well, on second thought, Charles, you have paid me a great compliment, my little twig. <laughs> <laughs> I shall be your pudgy little dada. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Until the stroke of one or twelve, brother. Oh, that's fine. Yes. Oh, Pop. Mm, yes, my own little flesh and timber. <laughs> Say, Dad, uh, can you lend me five bucks? Ah, uh, here it comes. Can I use your new necktie tonight? Uh, uh, and, Dad, can I play with your loaded dice and your marked cards? You know. I must deny you that, my dear son. I shall need those proclivities as I am intending the tri-state state has That's what I got here. Lady three patting and whisk cloud. But, Father, wouldn't that be dishonest? Yes, sir, you impugn my honor. Go oh, where I'll drive a nail in your chest. <laughs> Say, Charlie, I think you better go ahead with your poem. Yeah, uh, here it is. Uh, too steady. My father was a powerful man, Don. Oh, stop him. Take him away. My father was the president of a bank once, Don. Your father was really the president of a bank, Bill? Yes, he was. Here's another Eskimo. Oh, wait, wait, Bill. Wait, another Eskimo and your father? Uh, perhaps I should have said my father and another Eskimo. All right, Bill, all right. Your father was president of the bank. Uh, well, he wasn't exactly the president, Don. He was a vice president. He was sort of a treasurer. Uh, uh, he, used, you, uh, he uh, swept out the bank, to tell you the truth. Oh, well, that's different. Uh, but he was a fine sweeper, Don. He was a clean sweeper. The best all-around the corner sweeper in the bank. Uh, Bill, Bill. Yeah. He and another fellow were cleaning out the bank one night. But the police officer, the union, uh, <laughs> somebody got after him for working overtime. <laughs> Daddy. Oh, in the game. In the forest primeval. Filled with termites and boll weevils. <laughs> uh, that'd be good there, wouldn't it, Don? You can't understand why the author left that one out. All oh, the murmuring pines and the hemlocks. Father, dear father, come home with me now. Murmuring. I can see the little darlings tugging at his shirt, uh, mm -hmm. at his sleeve. Yeah. Bill, Bill, uh, Bill. The clock in the steeple clangs, too. Yeah, but, uh, Clang, clang! Clang, clang! If I had a voice, I'd get in there. Bill, Bill, Bill. the clock in the steeple strikes two. Was, was your father still lost? Oh, no, Don. Father was never lost. Mother always knew where to find him. She'd look out the kitchen window and see him lying out there on the grass. <laughs> on the snow in the wintertime. And she'd say, children, your father has had a drink or two. We children could never tell. We'd all think he was dead. 
but, uh, Phil, what you, you, were, you were telling me uh, what a powerful man your father was. Oh, yes, yes. Father was right a very little chest, but his stomach expansion was about seven and a half feet. <laughs> Nine stomach, stomach muscles stuck out to here. Yeah? And had a head like, shaped like a Rocky Ford cantaloupe. I don't know what's the matter up here. <laughs> was he? Was he? Oh, yes. Uh, that doesn't fit, but it's okay. <laughs> Now is my chance. Cheese, yeah. Daddy. Oh, he's coming Once again. Once in a forest primeval... Father, dear father, come home with me now. Bill, Bill, please. The clock in the steeple clangs three. Yeah. Clang, clang, clang. What is the sound I hear? It's the murmuring hemlocks. <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. The clock is uh, Jingle, jingle. What a smart boy. <laughs> Think they ring sleigh bells in church steeples. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, Bill, the clock in the steeple strikes three. What happens then? Ah, uh, that was a signal for Father to go home. Three strikes and Father was out. Oh. <laughs> y- you mean he went home, Bill? No, he went out just like a light. <laughs> he was quite a remarkable man, wasn't he, Bill? Oh, yes, he was, Don. He was very dignified, too. I remember one day he was walking by a circus tent, minding his own business as usual, when a lady stuck a finger out through a hole in the dressing room tent, right into Papa's eye. That was a cowardly thing for her to do, Bill. Oh, yes, it was, Don. <laughs> yes, it was. Pardon my levity. <laughs> Did your father stop to say anything to her? No, Don. He was always a gentleman. He kept right on going. He fell down three or four times. <laughs> Naturally. He used to do that to make the children laugh. <laughs> Finally, standing a trip, he walked walk through the swinging doors and right up to his room in the 16th floor of the Buster House. The Buster House? Yeah, the old Buster House, Don. It was later called the new Buster House and is now called the Buster House. Oh, oh, that's the place. Yeah, yeah all outside rooms, the sun streaming in day and night. Oh, wait a minute, Bill. Who ever heard of the sun streaming in at night? Midnight sun, Don? Oh, okay. <laughs> Beg your pardon, Bill? Yeah. As I was telling you, Father just been to the circus. Yeah, go on, Bill. He no sooner he removed his habiliment. That means clothing, Don. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Socks, shoes, button gaiters, shirts, and could I say undervestments? <laughs> or undergarments? No, no. Anyway, he took them off. <laughs> and his hat? Oh, no, he never took his hat off, Don. <laughs> he usually slipped in his hat, peculiar habit, a light, sort of a fawn gray fedora with a little feather in the side. Looks very chipper, Don. Usually wore smoke glasses. And was very fond of smoked herring. Yes, 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 Bill. Very go on. fond of that. Yeah, go on. With mustard. Yes, uh, Bill, Bill, go on. English mustard. Uh, Bill, will you please go on? Funny how a man prefers strong mustard to mild mustard, uh, don't you? All right, Bill, all right. Your father got his clothes off and got into bed. Yeah, uh, with his hat on. Don't leave that out. Yes, he got that habit from mother. She always slept with her shoes on. <laughs> Case of fire. Yeah, all right, all right. No sooner took his clothes off and got into bed with his hat on, the little general walked into the room. His father explained later, the general wasn't over a foot high, Don. Yeah. The little general looked at my father and he said, come on, boy, surround him. My father sneered. <laughs> and then he leered. Yeah. All right, continue, Bill. He never sneered without leering. Yeah. But, uh, Bill, what, what happened? Ah, oh, yeah. Was his mind alert? What a hair trigger brain. Yeah, well, what, what did your father do when the little general said surround him, boys? Oh, yes. Father saw the little general in his corps of orderly. They all had whiskers. They called him the Flying Muscovites. What, uh, you, you mean, mean all these little now. generals only a foot high had whiskers, Bill? Right, yes, that's right, Don. There they stood with muskets aimed surrounding my father, but father was unafraid. Unabashed. Undressed. Done everything. Boy. <laughs> Father was in a tough spot, Bill. Well, what, what did Father he do? Father threw a sheet over his head, completely confusing the army. And before the little general could say fire, my father jumped right over their heads and out of the window. Sixteen stories. The old brain was still working. <laughs> did your father jump right down to the sidewalk, Mr. Fields? Yeah, uh... No. Tell you that. When he got to the fifth floor, he happened to think that he'd forgotten his life insurance policy. So he jumped right back to the 16th floor again. Uh, did he find it, Mr. Oh, Field? take him away, Edgar. He's full of sap. <laughs> father, dear father, come home with me now. Two daddies. Once the, the clock in the steeple evil. strikes far. Clang, clang, clang. What is the sound I hear? The ambulance is coming. Before the father's stuff goes any farther, thank you, Edgar Brady and Charlie McCarthy. And thank you very much, W.C. Speaker. Thank you.